President Obama is in the middle of his 10-day trip to Asia, dancing with school children, promoting American business, and talking about what he calls, quote, a mid-course correction. Unquote. Senior political producer Rob Hendon is with the president. It's very late, but Rob's joining us before he turns in. Rob, what's, uh, what's the reception like for the president? Things are a little grim for him back here in the States, but how's it looking on the road for him? Uh, John, so far it's been a pretty good reception. Uh, Indian people have seemed to be uh, very happy about his visit for the most part. Uh, the Indian government has been responsive to his sales job. You know, he's over here to sell American products. And he, every step he gets, every chance he can, he talks about the need for American products to be sold in India. And he's walked away with uh, $10 billion worth of investments here. So as he says, we'll create 50,000 jobs back home. Yeah, he had a kind of, yeah, a rollout of, of deals between American business and India, um, emphasizing his economic uh, activity while he's over there. What happened, though, when there was a conversation about outsourcing? A lot of people think about India as the place where a lot of American jobs go to disappear. Yeah, a lot of people do think that, and the president was asked about that numerous times. And he made the point, and a point that was buttressed by American CEOs, like the CEO of PepsiCo and Honeywell, who are here with him, that as U.S. companies expand into India, that they do create jobs back home. And even if there are jobs here via a call center, which everyone's familiar with on the outsourcing, I, are, there are some that are created uh, in the United States. And he made that point. He, he really tried to knock down the stereotype and the false notion that expansion in India means losing jobs in the United States. And what's he got ahead of him now for the rest of the trip? Well, he's scheduled to take off uh, later tomorrow night here, uh, later tonight in Washington, to go to Jakarta, where he spent four years as a child. Uh, but that is up in the air, literally, as uh, volcanic ash from a recent eruption is raining down on the city. There have been a bunch of commercial flights that are canceled. So we're really not sure at this point if the president is going to make the trip. He was supposed to go twice in March and had to cancel. Uh, but the trip to Indonesia, and then he's going on to Seoul, South Korea, and Yokohama, Japan, it's all part of this economic recognition. He's really trying to open these emerging markets in Asia to U.S. goods. And that's really what he's going to try to do the next couple of days. That's what he's got laid out ahead of him. What's the talk in terms of the staff and the mood about last week's result? Um, what's, what, what are they feeling? What are they saying? Uh, and this mid-course correction he mentioned in that talk with students, any hint of what that's going to look like? Not really. They've actually been, I think, pretty upbeat. And, you know, they, they came here to try to change the message and talk about the economy. And so you mentioned rolling out those deals with the $10 billion award was really an attempt to stay, to stay on message and be optimistic, to come here and say, instead of what are the deliverables, what, what could we achieve? They actually achieved something. And that's what they're talking about. So they're very optimistic, actually, at this point. And in terms of the mid-course correction, the president also said that they're going to decide what they're going to do on tax cuts and a few other issues before he really shows his cards. Finally, Rob, I want to ask you before our internet con uh, connection entirely hmm. disappears about a little inside baseball or a little behind the scenes uh, thing that happened with uh, Robert Gibbs, the president's spokesman, uh, and the Indian security forces. They got into a little fracas. Uh, explain a little bit about what that was about and what Gibbs was, uh, why Gibbs had to f stick his foot in the door. Hmm. Uh, what was going on there was a, a bilateral meeting with the president and the prime minister of India, Prime Minister Singh. The Indian authorities were trying to get U.S. out of the room, or at least a portion of the U.S. press corps out of the room. And Mr. Gibbs uh, adamantly denied that he wanted the U.S. press to be in the room. We want to be in the room where the president is. And he threatened to uh, call off the meeting if the press wasn't allowed in. Uh, later, he re repeated that threat when the president spoke Parliament. Indian has had uh, his boxing gloves on today. He was really fighting for the First Amendment, you could say, and for the access for our press corps to get into this with the president. All right. Well, thank goodness Mr. Gibbs is there to protect us. Uh, president Bush had a similar experience with the security forces when he was president. Uh, thanks, Rob. Have a great rest of your trip, and thanks thank for talking to us. Thanks.